Assalamualaikum and good day to everyone. Today we continue our new topic on moment of inertia. There are four objectives of the lecture today. Number one, you should be able to describe the moment of inertia for area. Number two, to describe the parallel axis theorem for an area. Number three, to determine the moment of inertia by integration. And then number four, to determine the moment of inertia for composite bodies. At the end, you should be able, the expected outcome, you should be able to determine the moment of inertia for the composite body. Now, let's go through what is the chapter outline. 7.1 we're going to study what is moment of initial for area. Number two, we're going to study what is the parallel as a theorem for the area. Number three, what is the radius of direction for an area. 7.4, moment of initial for an area by integration. 7.5, moment of initial for composite bodies. And then we're going to go through the several examples of the lecture now what is the moment of inertia so moment of inertia it is a second moment of area it is defined as a geometrical property of an area that reflect from its arbitrary exits arbitrary means that a uh, reference which about what? Uh, reference of the axis. And then, it is denoted as I at X or I Y Y. Means that, if I at X, the axis is from X. I Y Y, the axis is from Y. Okay. And then, the equation for the moment of inertia is I is equal to A H squared. After this, you will see where is the equation come from. And then, the unit. The unit is millimeter power of 4. And then, why we need to study the moment of inertia? Because it is used to define the capacity of a cross-section of body to resist bending or rotation. So... Uh, what is the summary from this lecture, from this slide, is moment of inertia can be divided into two, which is number one, area moment of inertia, number two, polar moment of inertia. So, area moment of inertia is the I, X, X and I, Y, Y, and then polar moment of inertia is, is about the Z axis. So, it will use uh, to get the resistance torsion all right next so based on this uh, figure why such a components like beam and column have cross-section shape such as i t c h and here you can see this figure why solid rectangular square or circular cross-section are not popular Compare uh, to this. Compare to this. This is the frame. So this frame come from. Uh, this frame is created from this I beam, and then this is we call it T beam. The cross section. Okay, this is the cross section. Um, this is the cross section when we cut. Okay, this is the cross section. Uh, so you can you can see when we cut the beam, then we can have this kind of cross section. Alright, so the I-beam or T-beam cross-section shape are commonly used as a structural component. Most of the structural components are made of tube, dense, solid, square or round. Because the cross-sectional shapes and area for a given for a given beam shape is very important when doing strength or deflection analysis for design beam. Right next, you can see uh, this figure. So based on this figure, uh, 
uh, A, we have I section. B, we have square. And also C, we have square. It just only the the area. Area B and area C is different. But the cross section is similar. This is square. Alright, you... Um, okay, after this, after you taking the engineering mechanic, you will have... Uh, next subject is uh, mechanic of material. So based on this figure, we need to get the moment because uh, previous we said that the moment of inertia is related to the strength. So now the equation for the strength is m y over i. So m is the moment. So how to get the moment? Okay, uh, let's say uh, this is the beam uh, subjected to the loading here. So, you need to sketch the uh, shear force first. So, the shear force will be like this. Okay, so this is the shear force. Okay, after you get the shear force, and then you can plot the um, moment. So, so, this is the moment value. So, this value you will substitute into this equation. And then this is I that uh, you have to get the value. So that is how the moment of initial is related to the stress. So based on this figure A, B, C, which shape will develop less internal stress and deflection? And then Y. Alright. So from the figure, section A, this one, Okay, section A has the highest moment of inertia because most of the area is furthest from the X axis. So, it has the least stress and deflection. So, therefore, that is the relationship. Okay, that is the relationship. As the moment of inertia increases, increases the bending moment, the, bend, the beam bending decrease and then as the moment of initial decrease the bending the beam bending increases so which one is good bending decrease or bending increases uh, they definitely we want this right we want we want the uh, list of bending understand right Next, you uh, can um, <clears throat> you can reflect okay uh, from this uh, different cross section. Okay, based on this cross section, um, which shape will develop less internal stresses and deflection? If you if you see this board, so this board also uh, this is a lah. This is a this is B. So, this board have the same cross-section, right? Same cross-section. This is the cross-section. But, the shape and moment of inertia are different. Why? Because of what? Because the the thickness. Uh, this is the, the height, the thickness. The thickness of the beam is different, right? So, board B, this is the board B. Okay, board B is stronger than board A. Why? Because board B has the highest I. Because the depth of board is furthest from the X as is. So, it has least stress and deflection. So, it means that uh, we can conclude here the depth increases, the board bending decreases. So, you may have this activity. If you have ruler, then you can uh, make it like this. Uh, this is the, the vertical one and this is the horizontal one. So, if you have narrow depth, this is when you have the highest depth. Okay, understand? About the difference of the cross-section. Okay, this is another different cross-section. 
So rectangular cross section is commonly used for reinforced concrete beam. And then, but I beam and hollow beam are better than the solid. Solid means that uh, there is no hollow. Okay. So if we have hollow, uh, become like this. Okay. This is the cross section. Uh, so this is how your beam is look like. Okay. So you may see this is the uh, eye cross section and this is the hollow square cross section. So this is the stress distribution. This is the stress. Okay, this is the stress. All right. So this is another uh, comparison. So which shaft is stronger and then why? So this is solid. This is hollow. So you can see that... Um, this is point zero and this is the maximum. So here, starting from this point to this point. So it has less bending. So in torsion, hollow tube is the best compared to solid cross section. So we understood that uh, it's about when the cross section Hollow is much more better than the solid. Alright. Now, we want to know what is the equation or derivation to get the moment of initial for, for an area. Okay. You refer to this figure. Alright. So, a plate is submerged in a liquid. And then, the pressure, the pressure of liquid... At a distance y, okay, this distance y is p is equal to gamma y. So p is equal to gamma y. What is gamma? Gamma is the specific weight. Okay, and then when we have the pressure under the liquid, so we want to calculate what is the force. Force on the area at the point. So it means that area at the point is one area okay this is one area this is one area one area from the uh, body okay so this area this one area we can calculate the force so this force is equal to p d a so p times d a d a is the area area of this point okay area of this point so, df is equal to P, dA. P is the pressure. Okay, understand? Okay, and then we want to calculate what is the moment about the x axis due to this force y. So, the moment, we understood that moment is equal to force times the instant. So, now F, you already know that. <clears throat> so, you already know that F is... P, D, A. Right. So, now D. What is D? So, here, D is Y. So, this is D. So, D is Y. So, here, you put Y. So, that is Y here. Only, um, this one is for only one area. Right? One area. One small area. So, the total moment becomes when we have the integration of the area, it's become y d f. Right, y d f. So, d f is the force and the y is the distance. So, we can um, substitute back. Substitute back. So, <clears throat> so, what is the d f? So, here you have... Uh, how to get the gamma y squared dA. Right. How to get the gamma y squared dA. So, it become like this. Y dF. So, you can have... You can have here... For the total. So, uh, dF is from P dA, right? Y. So, this one is the... dF is equal to P dA. Okay. And then here P. What is P? So we have P is equal to gamma Y DA. Uh, this P, 
FDA. Then you can simplify. Simplify. So uh, this Y and Y. So this is comma. So become Y squared DA. Uh, right? So this is the moment of initial of the area plate about the X axis. Uh, this is the X axis. So we can say that this is the IXX. Understand? Alright. Moment of initial of the area about the X and Y axis are IX is equal to integration A Y squared DA. It means that moment of initial about X axis is from the X axis. So this is what is this? Y, okay, this is the origin. So this is the element of the A. So when the question asks us to get what is the moment of initial about the IX, means that from the X as is. So this is the distance Y. So what that is why it's become IX equal to integrations of area Y squared DA. Now, what is the IY? So, IY means that moment of inertia about the Y exit. Uh, so, what is the distance from the Y exit to the area? It is X distance. So, then that is why it become IY is equal to integrations of area X square DA. Understand? Uh, because previous we have gone through how to get the y squared dA. And then number two, moment of inertia of the area about the O or Z axis is equal to GO is equal to integration R squared dA. So where is the R come from? So R is the distance from uh, from the O, from the origin. So, it is the perpendicular distance here. So, you can see that this is the R, this is the X, and this is the Y. So, how to get the R? So, you can get R from this distance. So, you may have that. Uh, the equation for the polar moment of initial JO is equal to integrations of A, x squared plus y squared dA. And then, uh, we, we know that the i squared is equal to ix and y squared is equal to iy. You, so, you may have also this equation. So, the jo is also known as the polar moment of initial. So, which is, um, they have the relationship like this. r squared is equal to xy y squared because this is the perpendicular distance from the z axis to the element of the a d a